You may think the Honda Elevate is a classic case of too little, too late. That's because it doesn't get a turbo engine, it doesn't get a diesel, it doesn't even have a full hybrid on offer. But there is a catch. You know, this segment where the Honda is competing, of course, there are a lot of options for the buyers, but the catch is that a lot of buyers don't really pay for those turbo engines or hybrid. A lot of the customers go for the bare basic 1.5 naturally aspirated petrol engine. Now, to prove my point, I've got the Hyundai Creta here. Now, for the past six months, it doesn't have a turbo engine on offer, but this is still the segment bestseller with around 14,000 units on sale monthly. So that's the Creta without the turbo. Of course, it has a diesel, but it's the petrol that constitutes the majority of sales. Then you've got the Kia Seltos, which has just been given a makeover. But the thing is, again, this also gets a 1.5 litre petrol engine in addition to the diesel as well as the DCT, automatic and turbo and all that. But this is the mainstay of the Seltos range. And then the last one, you've got the Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider or the Maruti Suzuki Grand Vitara. Of course, this car only comes with the petrol. It also gets a full hybrid system. But again, it's the same story because it's the mild hybrid 1.5 nationally aspirated engine that brings volumes for both Toyota and Maruti Suzuki. So as you can see and guess, we have assembled all of the 1.5 liter naturally aspirated petrol units of all these SUVs. So which one is the best no frills family SUV out of these? Well, let's find out. To make this test more objective, we are going to be ranking each of these SUVs on different parameters, including design, features, ride and handling, fuel efficiency, and so on. The vehicle that's ranked number one in each category gets the maximum four points, whereas the ones ranked below it get three, two, and one point depending on the order they finish in. In the end, we'll tally up the score to find the winner of this test. Now, design is of course subjective, but for the sake of this review, we have to pick a winner. Now, I'll go one by one as to what I think about all the designs of these cars. So let's start with the Elevate. Of course, it looks very SUV-ish. It is the longest car here. It has the longest wheelbase for sure. And it has got the SUV proportions quite right. In fact, it is the car with the highest ground clearance here. But uh, as a design, it's a little conservative, I'd say, I won't say boring. It doesn't bring anything new to the table. Now, next up, you've got the Hyundai Creta. It's been around for a while. It definitely is a good looking car. But again, because it's so common, you don't really think differently of the Creta. Yes, there are new color options with this car, like that uh, Adventure Edition, that uh, green color. I think it looks phenomenal. The design, there's no problem with it, but it looks quite common. Now, next up is the Seltos and this car, is the newest here technically because it looks more macho, it looks the sportiest of the lot. So I think this is what Seltos's main USP is. It comes across as a young car, it comes across as something that kind of shakes the segment. And I have to say that this is the best looking car in the segment. Now, last but not least, the Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider. Well, of course, it is based on the same platform as the Brezza. But in terms of design, I think it looks quite good. It has the proper SUV stance. That's what I'd say because it is tall. It looks quite good. And with the Toyota badge, well, it has got that snob value as well. With the Grand Vitara, uh, you have got a Maruti badge. So people think it is a jumped up Brezza. But with the High Rider, it is more of a mini Fortuner. And that's why I think it has that brand pull. It has that brand recall. And for that reason, I think it's second in this test. So for me, the final score, the Seltos is the winner, followed by the Grand Vitara, I'm sorry, the Toyota High Rider, followed by the Creta, and the last is the Elevate. So which is the best part train here? Let's start with the Honda. It gets the tried and tested 1.5 liter naturally aspirated VTEC engine and it produces around 119 bhp and 145 newton meters of torque. So it is the most powerful engine of this lot. Now in terms of performance, it starts to come to life in a very linear fashion and that's what it does because it's a VTEC engine but it has got pretty good low torque as well. As in low down, it doesn't feel weak at all. The only problem I have with this engine is that it feels a little gruff or coarse as compared to all the other powertrains. So when you really step on the throttle paddle, well, that's when you can feel the engine 
it is not that refined and a lot of noise filters into the cabin as well and i think in terms of outright performance this is the engine that i prefer but yeah refinement nvh levels it isn't the best here now this one gets the cvt the car we have on test is the cvt and i think in terms of drivability it's phenomenal because there is not a single occasion where you feel the cvt is not up for the job of course it's not a sporty drivetrain so you can't expect lightning fast shifts but overall if you drive it normally i think this engine and gearbox is pretty much perfect now when you come to the creta it has a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine in fact this and seltos they have the same engine and gearbox options here so they are both made it to a cvd transmission they produce around 130 in bhp and 144 newton meters of torque and these are decently powerful these are quite adequate performers i think in terms of drivability they're slightly better than the elevates engine because the elevate has that low end is slightly weak as compared to these two this is linear throughout of course these engines are not exciting uh, the Creta and Seltos is but uh, if you talk about drivability if you talk about how linearly the performance flows I think these engines do a better job and then the best part about these engines is the NVH and refinement you can absolutely hear nothing inside the cabin when you're driving these cars now coming to the gearbox they both get CVD transmission at least here but they're also available with a manual transmission so the CVD transmission again it's flawless it is seamless in its operation and I have to say that the shifts especially in the Seltos felt the smoothest of all the cars here in the Elevate and even in the Creta you can feel the jerk especially while downshifting but in this you can't really feel anything so of all the automatics here I think this one is the best in terms of the shift quality now if you come to the Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider and it is the least powerful unit here it produces only about 103 bhp and 137 newton meters of torque now of all the engines here i think this is the most refined at idle you can't hear it it is nearly silent it also gets the mild hybrid technology and that means it is technically the most advanced unit here in terms of that electrified version now uh, coming to the performance of course you really have to ring it because it also has a little bit of lag at uh, low rpms but once it starts building it has got ample performance on offer but it's not as thrilling as the honda's unit so uh, the maruti's unit or the toyota's unit well it does the job but it definitely leaves you wanting more now this particular version that we have here it is the manual transmission and the shift quality is brilliant because maruti gearboxes or suzuki gearboxes or toyota gearbox in this case they are phenomenal the shifts are really light the clutch action is light so you really enjoy working the gearbox of course it comes with a six-speed automatic as well we have driven it on previous occasions and i'm not a fan of that transmission because it tends to upshift very quickly and it doesn't feel as intuitive as the CVTs on the other cars so uh, for me if you're picking up this car if you want an automatic it again loses the battle against all of these cars now coming to the ranking order the first one for me would be the Honda Elevate it is the best engine here most exciting I'd say uh, great drivability the CVT is also great of course it's not the most refined but I think you can live with that it's not that bad as well so for me that's the top engine here but I'd say the Kia is second for me because somehow they've tuned it slightly differently especially the gearbox and it feels smoother so for me the Kia is number two and the Hyundai is number three and the last spot of course goes to the Toyota Urban Cruiser high rider and that's because uh, this engine there's nothing wrong with it but of course in this company it doesn't feel as exciting it's not the most powerful uh, the drivability is good but it's not as good as other cars here and of course the automatic transmission even though we are driving the manual here is not the best if you're looking for that daily drivability so this is the order the Honda wins in the engine department if you want to know which one is the most fuel efficient SUV here well it is the Toyota High Rider as it returned a fuel efficiency of 17 km to a litre. The Elevate was second with 15 km to a litre while the Creta and Seltos were the thirstiest and they returned close to 13 km to a litre. When it comes to the interior, fit and finish and quality, I think the Seltos is a clear winner here of course the latest car yeah? but uh, the other thing is it feels the nicest overall the dashboard design is clean and clutter free you've got this nice slab 
of two screens you've got this big touch screen very nice and intuitive and you've also got a digital driver display so it feels the most modern in that regard plus the fit and finish and overall quality i think it is the best closely matched with the creta overall there are no hard plastics here of course the quality is simply phenomenal so everything you touch and feel even this plastic over here it is good quality it feels soft touch the dashboard is also good quality and remember this is not the top end variant and the steering wheel also feels the nicest to hold it feels the most sporty and i think overall if i have to pick a winner here it has to be the seltos because it does virtually everything flawlessly the creta might be the oldest car here but the moment you get into this car well it blows you over with the fit and finish the quality and the overall layout of this cabin it is very practical and it feels the most premium still of course the seltos being the newer car it has more wow factor but the fit and finish the quality of the creta it is actually equally matched with the seltos but just based on the fact that the seltos newer and this is older i am putting it in number 2 so the overall dash layout and everything on this car feels tremendous you see this green and white upholstery the seats everything feels so nice everything is so practical ergonomics are perfect you sit here in this car and it feels like second skin it fits you like a glove and i think that's the reason why a lot of people still buy the creta because everything feels so natural here plus the quality the fit and finish even though like i said it's the oldest car it still feels the best of course it's not perfect in every way because you still have got uh, hard touch plastics over here but they're not as bad as they are in the toyota or in the honda so again coming back to the quality and fit and finish i think the creta does a very good job plus it has got a lot more features also which we are going to talk about later but uh, yeah overall i think the creta is still there it has still got it the elevate you get the entire suite of ada systems including lane change assist including automatic emergency braking and the lot adaptive cruise control in fact that's the best feature that this car has uh, in terms of adas so i think in that regard this car is very well equipped now apart from that of course the seats and everything they also feel quite luxurious quite spacious yeah it misses out on a couple of things like you don't get ventilated seats and the front seats are also not electrically adjustable plus there are no type c uh, charging ports so that is a bit of a miss but overall it has got steering mounted controls it has got auto dimming irvm you've got led headlamps so everything is more or less here especially at the price it comes at but well, i think it is a very well equipped car the interior of the high rider well it is quite decently packaged and it looks quite good it looks quite modern but uh, in this company i don't think this is the best cabin quality or interior that you can get so for me i think i rated the lowest but uh, that's not to say that it's bad or the quality is not up to the mark it is a great interior it is very practical and it's quite spacious as well the dashboard design is very funky very sporty and i think it is a busy design but there are a lot of elements in here you've got this uh, soft touch dash over here and it looks quite premium but at the same time the plastics on top they are quite scratchy and shiny so uh, again in this company it doesn't feel the best quality Now when it comes to creature comforts I think the Creta still is the most well equipped car here. Now again you have the Seltos you have the Elevate you have new cars but if you talk about this trim line if you talk about the car that sells the most the variant I think in terms of that Hyundai has absolutely nailed it because this is the SX version but it gets an optional pack of course it comes for some extra money but you've got a lot more goodies compared to the other cars it's not even optional on other cars like for example you've got ventilated seats you've got powered seats and these are some of the features that make you feel nice it gives the car a more premium appeal it has also got bose audio the touch screen is quite nice to use then on top of that you've also got a panoramic sunroof which is largest in the segment it feels quite good to use and overall like i said in terms of features in terms of equipment in terms of how the car makes you feel it has that thing going for it at this price point 
Now, of course, the Creta is the most well-equipped car here, but the Elevate is a close second. Now, this is the top-end variant. It comes packed with all the features that you'd want in that price segment. Now, of course, the top-end models of the Creta and the Seltos, they are very well-equipped, but they come at a price. But this car, for its price, for this engine 1.5 i think it is quite well equipped it gets a big touch screen which is quite nice to use you've got wireless android auto and wireless apple carplay which none of the koreans get of course uh, the high rider gets it but not the koreans so that is a great advantage you've also got uh, this wireless smartphone charger here now apart from that uh, of course the main party piece of this car is that for its price it also gets ADAS. Now ADAS is offered with the Seltos but again it's on the top end turbo versions it's not available with the 1.5 but with the Elevate you get the entire suite of ADAS systems including lane change assist including automatic emergency braking and the lot adaptive cruise control in fact that's the best feature that this car has uh, in terms of ADAS so I think in that regard this car is very well equipped. High Rider is quite futuristic. It has got this big touchscreen over here. And I have to say that this is probably the best screen here. In direct sunlight, the visibility is the best of all. Although, that said, the camera quality is not that great. It feels quite subpar and the colors are very saturated. At the same time, it is the only car here in this spec that gets a 360 degree camera. So, if you want the mid spec 1.5 mild hybrid engine not the top end version i think this is the only car here that gets a 360 degree camera and it is quite helpful now again uh, in terms of features and equipment it is very decently packed but uh, the thing is it is the v neo drive version with the mild hybrid and it doesn't get all the bells and whistle which the full hybrid strong hybrid version gets so you don't get ventilated seats on this top end variant you don't get a wireless phone charger you don't get a head-up display so it misses out on a couple of features and again it doesn't have powered seats as well yes you do get a panoramic sunroof and it is quite nice but the problem is this shade is very thin and you have got light coming into the cabin and it also gets really hot when you're driving in direct sunlight or on a hot day next up are the seats which are quite comfy and uh, they are nicely contoured so if you're driving i think they give you nice side support as well and i think these are probably one of the best driving seats of all the cars here because they feel quite nice but uh, at the same time they're not ventilated so yes again like i said you, you do miss that feature here as well now uh, the steering is also quite nice to hold it feels quite sporty and uh, it goes with the overall image of the car you've got nice analog dials over here which are definitely the sportiest in this lot and i really like it because the way you drive this car it feels quite involving to drive uh, the other thing is you've got a usb port here it doesn't get a type c port at the front but you've got two type c ports at the back now in terms of features and equipment it is as well equipped as the Creta but of course it misses out on a lot of features because this doesn't get that optional thing that the Creta gets so that means you don't get powered seats you don't even have ventilation in the sense the seats are not ventilated although they are available with high trims but in this spec in this 1.5 CVT it doesn't get those features the other thing is of course uh, it has got a nice screen and all that but again it's latest car here but it doesn't get wireless Android Auto or CarPlay but then Again, coming back to the creature comforts, you've got a large panoramic sunroof, you've got seats that feel nice, you've got these perforated seats, the quality, like I said, it is great, and at the back also, it is quite spacious. So yes, it is very well packed in that sense, but it misses out on a lot of features, especially at this price point, and even the ADAS, it gets ADAS systems, but not on this trim. It is a reserve for the top end turbo versions. So the ADAS suite that it gets, like the Honda, it is there in the 1.5 naturally aspirated version as well, because that's the only version it has. But on the upside, this is the only SUV here that gets dual zone air conditioning. So that is a plus in terms of creature comforts for the Kia. Now space and comfort is one thing where the Elevate and the Koreans are very evenly matched and it's really very hard to choose a winner in this department. But for the Elevate, I'd say that its seat feels the nicest in the sense the cushioning is the softest and it feels quite nice. 
and the way you're sat on this seat it feels more like a sedan and not an suv that's because the seats are reclined back and as you can see i'm sitting here in a very comfortable position plus this car has the longest wheelbase here so there is a lot of space in here the space management is really the best of all the cars now uh, the other thing is of course in all the other cars you sit a little upright but here i am lounging sort of and it feels comfortable but i'm not sure over long distances if you'll appreciate or not so the sense of space of course it's there but uh, the under thigh support because the way you're sat on this seat well it isn't there plus uh, this has got ac vent here of course but they feel very crude very old style i think in the creta and in the seltos they are quite nice but here it's not that great plus you don't even have a usb port to charge your phone you've got this uh, 12 volt socket and i think it is quite outdated in that sense so yes space wise this car has an advantage but in terms of comfort i'd say the feel good factor of the koreans well of course it is nicer in those cars now in terms of space uh, the creta doesn't quite have the knee room or the leg room of the elevate but if you talk about comfort i think it does a better job because you sit quite upright here and it feels like a more comfortable riding position now um, i'm sat here i'm 58 and i think there is a lot more headroom and i'm sitting in a very comfortable position i can travel long distance sitting here quite comfortably plus these neck pillows over here they are quite nice to use it gives the car again a more premium a more comfy sort of feeling and i think that really works with the creta because these small details they work in creta's favor and like i said this is what people like about the creta this is why it's the segment best seller because all those small details that hyundai pays attention to i think it is what the customer wants now at the back you've got ac vents of course you've got a usb type a port as well there's no type c which is in the seltos as well as in the toyota but uh, yeah it works just fine another great thing about the creta is that it comes with window blinds and you won't realize that it's not a big deal but it definitely does make a difference on a hot and sunny day again small details but if you talk about the overall comfort I think this really plays part. Now at the back it is more or less the same as the Creta because you sit quite upright here. In terms of space it's again identical to the Creta's. It's not as spacious as the Elevate, but uh, in terms of comfort again it feels quite nice and you sit here in an upright position. Uh, I think it's more upright than the Creta as well, but uh, again you don't get those nice pillows over here. Now what the Seltos does differently as compared to the other cars is that it gets two USB type C charging ports at the back. The seats cushioning well I think it is like the Creta but for some reason I think it's not as soft it feels a little hard compared to the Creta for some reason. But uh, overall yeah I don't think in isolation you'll be complaining about it that much and even with the Elevate or the Creta it's not a night and day difference. Now when it comes to the back seat experience I think the high rider is the tightest of all I mean it's spacious but if you compare it with the elevate especially the legroom and even with the creta or the seltos it doesn't feel as spacious the other thing is if you can check the headroom is not that great so if you have taller passengers with you you are going to struggle a bit so uh, that's the thing about the high rider of course it is spacious but i think it's not the best yeah the great thing is uh, the seats are quite nice very comfy you sit in a very upright position so for longer durations you will enjoy the comfort of the seats it has also got very decent under thigh support so i think that's what you're going to like but the other problem is because it also gets all wheel drive this is the all wheel drive version but even the regular versions will have this transmission hump over here so third passenger might struggle a bit you also get ac vents at the back although the quality is not that great and it looks quite fidgety and you've also got two usb type c ports so again great feature uh, the other thing about this cabin because it's all black it gives you that sort of feeling that it's not that spacious it's not airy as other cars so you are going to feel a little claustrophobic here so in this company i have to say that the high rider is probably not the best and i'd rank it the lowest if you're looking for back seat comfort so the boot space well it's pretty straight forward because the elevate has the biggest boot of the lot it has 458 liters of capacity now uh, the creta and seltos are identical and the high rider has the smallest boot oh. 
Okay, so coming to the handling of the Elevate. Well, I was thinking this is a family SUV and it's not going to behave that well in the sense it's not going to be exciting to drive. But actually this platform, it feels quite potent in the sense how it handles, how it goes around bends. I think this feels quite lively to be honest. Because uh, again, the way you sit in this car, I'm sitting quite low. It doesn't feel that SUV-like. It feels more or less like a sedan because you sit quite low down and uh, the steering is also meaty to hold. It feels as if it's inviting you to drive it hard. The other thing that I like about this SUV is that when you're sat here, you get a very nice view of the road ahead. Plus the suspension, again, it's not uh, soft or wallowy. It is quite beautifully damped and it feels perfect when you're going around a bend. And I think it has to do with the platform most of all because the platform feels quite stiff and the suspension, even though they can play with it, it's not rock hard. But uh, the way this car feels around the bend, the composure of this platform, well, I think that's what impressed me the most. And it feels the most agile, to be very frank with you. The other thing that I enjoy about uh, the Elevate's driving position and driving in general is uh, the steering. It has got nice feedback. It weighs up really beautifully when you're picking up speed and high speed stability and road manners. Well, they are also phenomenal. It rides like a very mature SUV. So uh, I think uh, in terms of who's top in terms of handling, well, I think it's a close call between this and the Seltos. The Seltos also feels much nicer in terms of how the suspension is set up. But this overall, because of the platform and the suspension, I think this feels more eager and I feel that it gives you that seat of the pants feel. The Greta is not the sharpest SUV of this lot, of course, but that's not to say that it's a lousy handle. It doesn't feel lifeless per se, but at the same time, it's not the most exciting and you don't feel like, you know, that you have to push it hard around a bend. It has body roll, but it's not to the point where it feels out of control or sloppy in that sense. It is a very nice, well-behaved SUV. And I think for regular folks, that's what matters. But yes, if you are someone who wants a more sporty driving experience, but I think the Creta doesn't quite cut it, especially in this company. But uh, on the whole, I don't think you can complain about it because it is quite a decent handler. The only problem with the Creta is uh, probably the fact that, uh, yeah, it does feel a little uninspiring to drive in the sense how it handles. But overall, I'd say the Creta does everything that a normal person would want. And the steering is also nice. It weighs up really beautifully. If you're doing high triple digit speeds, it feels quite good to drive. And the stability is also good. It doesn't feel floaty like the earlier Cretas. But overall, in isolation, I don't think anyone will have any problem with how the Creta handles. Now, this is the same car as the Creta, but there is a night and day difference between how this car handles because it definitely runs a stiffer setup. So uh, the steering is also well weighted. If you go around a corner at a faster pace, I think this is the car that feels the most planted and it also feels to enjoy it. If you have to talk about the handling of the High Rider, I think it sits somewhere between the Creta and the Seltos. In the sense, uh, it is a very neutral handler, but uh, in terms of driver involvement, I'd say it's slightly above the Creta, but uh, not as great as the Seltos as well. Uh, and the reason for that is quite simple because the steering feels quite lifeless in comparison to even the Creta. But uh, yeah, in terms of body movements, in terms of body control, I think it definitely has less role than the Creta. Now, uh, the other thing that I really love about this car is again the platform. Just like the Elevate, it has got solid underpinnings. You are going to like the agile nature of this chassis. So that's quite good. And I think, uh, again, it's not really a driver's SUV per se but I think it is quite good in terms of handling. The only slight trouble is, again, like I said, the steering. It doesn't uh, self-center quite quickly and uh, the other thing is also the steering feels quite dead at the center. So that's the only drawback, I'd say, in terms of handling with this car. Now, unlike the Seltos, which is tuned for a sporty handling, the Creta is tuned for comfort and that shows in the way it rides because uh, the ride quality is simply stellar. It feels so beautiful. Everything is so well damped that it 
keeps you isolated inside here. Apart from uh, bumps at really low speeds, let's say when you're driving it over parking speeds in your society or in malls, the speed breakers, that's when it feels a little stiff. But other than that, I think the Creta suspension is meant for Indian roads. It's tailor-made for Indian roads because it feels absolutely perfect everywhere. In terms of ride quality, well, I think the Elevate is a bit of a mixed bag. It's not as comfy as the Creta or the High Rider. Now, uh, what I like about this thing is that if you're driving at really high speeds, you will appreciate how stable it feels. And when you go over wavy roads, it maintains that composure. The road holding is quite brilliant. I was not expecting it in a Honda, but yesterday I was cruising at around 120 kilometers per hour on the highway. The ride quality was phenomenal. It was soaking up bumps and undulation on the road perfectly well. And at the same time, it felt quite confident. At low speeds, yes, like with the Creta, it is a bit noisy at really low speeds if you go over a bump like for instance that just happened if you go over a bump at a fairly higher pace than usual you really have to come to a standstill if you're going over sharp bumps but if you take them without a bother in the world you will feel that noise through the suspension filtering into the cabin and i think in that regard it doesn't feel as abuse friendly as the grand vitara or the high rider so yes in terms of ride quality i'd say it is closer to the Creta, not as good, but uh, yeah, if, if I have to choose a car with the right ride and handling balance here, I think the Elevate is going to have it. But in terms of ride quality, yes, it's behind the Grand Vitara and the Creta, but only slightly. I think overall it is the better package in terms of ride and handling because this balance is spot on in this car. If you talk about ride quality, the Seltos isn't the top car here. It is in fact ranked lowest. That's because it runs a stiffer suspension setup and it is a little firm because when you go over bad patches, you can definitely feel all the noise filtering into the cabin and it doesn't feel the most comfortable. And it's not plush like the Creta or uh, the Toyota. So um, in that regard, I don't think it is the best suspension if you care about comfort and ride quality. So I think in that regard, yes, it's not the best, but again, it's not a deal breaker either. Now where the High Rider absolutely kicks it out of the park is when it comes to the ride quality because this SUV has the best ride quality here. It feels so supple, it glides over all the bumps and undulation and it's so well damped that it has got magic carpet like ride. And I think it's the best over here because you drive it over anything and it just gobbles it up very, very comfortably. I think it gets full marks because this chassis, this platform, the way it behaves on the road, the way it absorbs all the bumps, it is phenomenal. I think all cars based on this platform, they feel really unbreakable in that sort and there is absolutely no noise filtering into the cabin. It feels the best for sure. Well, I have to say, in this department, all the cars are very evenly matched. The Creta and Seltos get six airbags as standard, which is a great thing, while the Elevate and High Rider come with dual airbags as standard, but they also come with six airbags in the top end variants. If I have to pick one car here, I'd say the Elevate has a slight edge over others because of its ADAS systems. When it comes to offering the best value for your money, the Elevate trumps its rivals. It's priced very competitively and even its lower variants are decently kitted out with features. The High Rider is number two here because it offers a lot of features at its price point and is better equipped in terms of creature comforts. The Creta is the most feature-loaded vehicle here in its SX Odrim, but it costs nearly 1.5 lakh more than the top-end Elevate, so that's quite a bit of stretch. The Seltos comes last in this category simply because it doesn't get many fills in its mid-spec HTX variant. So, all said and done, let's take a look at the final scores. We have the final scores with us and it's the Honda Elevate that has come out on top. So that means it is the winner. But, you know, the thing here is that it has won by a very slim margin. And to be honest with you, I think all of these cars 
are winners in their own right. The Elevate appeals to someone who cares about the value for money proposition, who loves to drive, who wants a spacious, no-nonsense SUV. I think the Elevate does that. Whereas the Creta, well, it is evergreen and it is the best seller for a reason. It does everything. It is a jack of all trades. Plus, it is the most feature packed and I think it's also priced brilliantly. Of course, it commands slight premium over all of these cars, but then it brings a lot more to the table. Next up is the Seltos. Well, I'd say it is identical to the Creta, apart from the fact that it is its younger sibling, so it's sportier and it's more premium in a sense that it has a more youthful approach. So if you want something more sporty to drive, but you want all the features of the Creta, I think the Seltos does that. Lastly, the Toyota. Well, I think the High Rider does everything that you want from an SUV in this segment. It is the most fuel efficient here. So if you're after efficiency, if you're after reliability, the impeccable bulletproof reliability of Toyota or Suzuki, I think this is the SUV to buy. So all of these cars, like I said, they are winners in their own right and it ultimately depends on your individual preference. But yes, if we have to pick a winner in this test based on our scoring, it is the Honda Elevate that has come out on top and it is the winner of this no frills SUV test.